All right, in this video, we're going to do example three. In this exa example, I'm going to use the quadratic formula to solve an, a quadratic equation where the discriminant is going to be a non-perfect square. We've used it in a previous video where the discriminant is negative in number two and where the discriminant is a perfect square in number one. So if you don't recall watching those videos, then please go back and watch those videos because you will see all three examples on a test or a quiz. Alright, so the first step as always is to put the equation into standard form. Right now I know if I was going to do number three that the equation is not in standard form because standard form again ax squared plus bx plus c has to equal zero. In this case it does not equal zero. My, my quadratic term 4n squared is in its right place on the left hand side but it equals 1 minus 10n. That tells me I have to move my 1 and my 10 in over to the left side so that it equals 0. In order to do that, I can do it either or. It doesn't matter the order necessarily. I'm going to move the B term, though, because I know the B term has to come after the A term. And then I'll move the 1 as well. But the B term is a negative 10 in, so I know to move it, I have to plus it to both sides because it was being minus. So I plus 10 in. To the right side and I plus 10 in the left side. Now that'll cancel out and then in order to move the 1 it's a positive 1 so I have to subtract 1 from the right side and then I have to subtract 1 from the left side. Anything I do to one side I have to do to the other. Now because I did that on the right side the negative 10 in cancels out with the positive 10 in and the 1 cancels out with the negative 1. So I know now that my First step, my quadratic equation is going to equal zero because every term on that side canceled out. And so nothing was left, so it equals zero. Now, in order to write it in standard form, the highest power, 4n squared, the highest power term, 4n squared has to come first, right here. Then the linear term, the b term, which is a, in this case it used to be a negative 10n, but I moved it, so now it's a positive 10n. And then finally, it used to be a positive 1, but I moved it by subtracting, so it's a negative 1 is my C term. So I have put it in the standard form, highest power to lowest power, and ending with the constant C term. That's step 1. Step 2 is to identify my A, my B, and my C. Now, if you notice, my A term didn't change from step 1. It was always a positive 4. It's still a positive 4. My B term did change, and this is why it's so, it's so important to do step one, putting it into standard form. From the beginning, the original problem, it was a negative 10n, but it was on the right side, so I moved it over to the left, which turned it into a positive 10. So from right here. So if you don't do step one, you, you will do step two incorrectly. So step one is very important. And then finally, my C term, same thing. It used to be a positive one, but I had to move it over to the left by subtracting, so now it's a negative 1. And please, please, please include a negative with the number if you're subtracting it in the equation from step 1. All right, step 2 is now done. I've identified A, B, and C. Step 3 is, again, the same thing as what we've always done, inputting the A, B, and C into the quadratic formula. Now, the quadratic formula begins with the opposite B. In this case, b is a positive 10, so the opposite of positive 10 is negative 10. And then, plus or minus, the square root of b squared, which in this case is 10 squared. Please put that in parentheses, the number 10, minus 4, parentheses, my a, which is 4, and parentheses, my c, which is negative 1. All over 2 times my a, which is 4. That is step 3, entering in all the inputs correctly. Step 4, this is where it's start, going to start to look a little bit different than example problem 1, number 1, and then number 2. Because step 4, you start working with the discriminant. You're going to start to simplify the discriminant. And so this is where the discriminant is going to be a non-perfect square. I'm going to show you that in just a second. If you put the discriminant, 10 squared minus 4 times 4 times a negative 1, into your calculator, you will get, and I'm going to rewrite everything, get in the habit of please rewriting everything for every step, a negative 10 plus or minus the square root of a 116. 
all over 2 times 4, which is 8. So this is the huge difference. 116 is neither negative or a perfect square. And so if you remember, if it's not a perfect square, mainly not a perfect square, then you have to do some side math. And I need to see this side math. I know it's not a perfect square because if you put the square root of 116 in your calculator, you'll get 10 point something. It doesn't come out to a whole number, so I know it's not a perfect square. So again, I need to, at this point, see some side math. Remember, now you have to simplify the radical by doing your factor tree. So this is what's going to look different, doing your side math. In example one, if you remember, it just broke down to a perfect square, so I could immediately jump to step five, rewriting everything with the perfect square. In example two, it was a negative number, and that looked a little bit different. So this is the difference here. I have to do my factor tree to reduce the radical to simplest terms. Now, in order to do the factor tree, I have to think of factors that go into the original number of 116. It could be starting off as easy as 116 is even, so I know that 2 goes in there. 2 goes in there, 116 divided by 2, 59, or I'm sorry, 58 times. 58 times. 2 times 58 goes back to 116. And again, I have to get to the prime factorization of this tree. And so I know 2 is a prime factor, but 58 is not a prime factor. 58 still has factors that go into it. Again, 58 is even, so I can use 2 one more time. 58 divided by 2 is 29. Now I have gotten to the prime factorization of 116. All of these numbers are prime factors. At this point, I look for partners or pairs, whatever you want to call it. Because remember, pairs come out of the original radical. If you treat the radical as a house, in order to leave the house, you have to have a partner to help you get out. So, partners come out as the single form of the number, 2. It comes out as 1, 2. And what's left inside is the number that didn't have a partner which is 29. So, 116 here, I know that's a lot of, but you'll get better at simplifying radicals as you practice it. 116 gets turned into 2 radical 29. So in step 5, I rewrite everything again. Negative 10, plus or minus, the square root, sorry, I forgot my 2. Negative 10 plus or minus 2 times the square root of 29, all over, 8. Again, so the big difference here was that the square root of 116 was not a perfect square, so I had to simplify it into 2 radical 29, and that's how I write it, the number first and the radical after that. And then finally, step 6 is to simplify the expression in step 5 that you came up with, if it is possible. In this case, it is possible. Sometimes it won't be, but it's, it's possible, and I know it to be possible because all of my whole numbers are even. So 10, or negative 10, 2, and 8 are all even numbers. So I know that they can all be reduced by a factor of 2. And I mean reduced meaning they're all divisible by 2. So I can divide each one of them by 2 and rewrite my simplest form of my answer in step 6. This won't always happen in step 5, but in this case it can happen. So negative 10 divided by 2 is a negative 5, plus or minus 2 divided by 2 is 1. I don't have to write 1 if it ever shows up, but in this case I will. And then the square root of 29 cannot be simplified anymore. We determine that over here. And then finally, all over, 8 divided by 2 is 4. So my final answer is negative 5 plus the square root of 29 divided by 4, and negative 5 minus the square root of 29 divided by 4. If you remember, we will always have two solutions unless it's a special case. In this case, we do have, indeed, two solutions. Step 6, I square my answer to let me know that I am done solving this. I have found my two solutions.